Hi guys and welcome to part two of the 10 best factions in RTR Imperium So Rectum. If you want to check out part one, check it out down in the description below. But this is the video where we are going to be talking about five of the best factions in the game in terms of interest for me, factions I find most interesting. So not necessarily the factions that are strongest and most powerful, but some of the factions with the most interesting starts and campaigns going forward. And if you do like this video guys, make sure you do like and subscribe. As always, we're going to start with a lovely bonus faction, Pionia, right next to Macedon and the Dardanians, the Denthalate and the Maidi at the start of the game. The reason why Pionia is so fun is you can go down south into Macedon like a true Thracian and start raiding, have some vengeance for your ancestors down there and smash all the busts in Pella of Philip II. Thracian rosters are always good fun as well, guys. Now, as we did last time, guys, we're going to start with a rather difficult faction. It is the Illyrian Kingdom, one of the factions that the mod beta testers found the hardest in the Illyrian update. I have done a video on it, guys, that you can check out here if you want to see how it goes <laughs> before you play this faction, because it is incredibly, incredibly difficult. You are at war with Epirus early on, which is rather annoying, because as soon as you board a Macedon, guys, Macedon will attack you if you're playing on harder difficulties. You do have a couple of good things going for you, though. The ability to recruit some AOR Greek units is always helpful against other Greeks, and you have the solid Southern Illyrian roster, which can beat back the Greeks if you know how to use them correctly. My suggestion for this faction, guys, is to let Macedon and Epirus kill each other if you can, and then go and take some richer lands in Macedon. Don't worry too much about Epirus, because as we said last time, their land is very, very poor. So go and take some richer land. You're going to need it going forward as this faction. And coming in at number two, guys, representing the Greeks, we have Pergamon. What a fantastic faction this is. You don't start relatively strong, but you're not terribly weak. You're not a one province miner either. And you start with Pergamon, which will become, as you go through the game, an absolutely fantastic city. It is a really, really good city for trade and all that sort of thing for making money. You do start bordering the Seleucids, which of course is not too fun, with the Ptolemies very, very close as well. The Seleucids now start with two full stacks in the area, but if you can get rid of at least one of those, you should have free reign to chain through Seleucid cities and cripple them in Anatolia. Combined with that, guys, there are a number of very small nations that are easy pickings for you early game. Chios, Chios, Kizikus, Priene, um, the islands of Athens, all that sort of thing. If you want to go and take them early game to build up your power base, that is a really good idea to do that. Just be ready for one of the larger empires to declare war on you at some point. But you can build up a nice little power base and then explode out of your starting position into the lands of Anatolia and then create an Anatolian Greek Empire of your choosing. They are a really nice faction and they also have a fantastic roster as well. And stepping away from the Greeks, guys, we have a Thracian faction, Odrysia. What a lovely, lovely faction this is. I have just started a campaign as these guys recently, guys, so check that out in the description below but this is a really fun faction because you start at the depths the utter depths of the Adrissian kingdom at their weakest point in a long long time they've been destroyed by both the celts and the greeks at the start of the game so they start incredibly incredibly weak apart from a couple of things the first thing is the fact that you can expand extremely quickly at the start of the game, taking out the Bessie, the Asti, the Kabyle, unifying these Thracian tribes really, really quickly. And the second thing, guys, is the fact that you get access to, apart from the Horse Archers, in my opinion, the most cost-effective unit in the game, the Romfire Foroi, 
These guys scare nearby enemy infantry and are armor piercing. The only thing with them is they don't have much armor and they will not stand up against cavalry. So if you are fighting Greeks, they are fantastic. Just make sure you bring enough cavalry to fight off the Greek cavalry that's going to assail you. And like I've said before, guys, I love the Thracian rosters. They are fantastic. They're like fast shock rosters, so very different to the Greeks. And you will be fighting a huge variety of enemies around you. You'll fight the Thracians in Kabyle, the Bessi, the Asti. You'll fight the Greeks in Pontic Pentapolis and by Byzantion, and you'll also fight some Hellenistic factions like the Seleucids, the Antigonids as well. Overall, this is a fantastic faction if you want to start really weak and become really, really strong. I've also done a guide on these guys, so check that out. And coming in at number four, we have a big hefty boy, and I am talking about the Antigonids. One of the best rosters in the game, a fantastic starting position with huge borders and a massive variety of enemies. There's not much to not love about these guys. If you don't like starting really big, this isn't the faction for you. But if you are interested in playing a Hellenistic Diadochi without 200 or 150 settlements to start with, like the Seleucids or the Ptolemies, then this is absolutely the faction for you. You're still going to get the amazing Hellenistic roster of the Antigonids with um, really, really good phalangites, probably the best in the game with the Hetairoi um, and with some fantastic, fantastic options as you go into the game but you're also going to be a lot smaller so you can build yourself up to become the hegemon of greece and then go wherever you want the only thing with the antigonids is that you don't start with any of your own troops you start with loads of mercenaries and aor troops so you're not going to be able to replenish those armies right at the start of the game you're going to have to just use them and that is what i would suggest go and use those armies to conquer epirus to conquer the peloponnese all that sort of thing use those troops as much as you can and when they're gone that's when you should have another army ready because you'll have been recruiting it all of that time but ultimately these guys are a fantastic faction you're going to fight such a variety of enemies you're going to fight epirus at the start you'll fight thracians and illyrians in the north and the northwest and you'll fight uh, more hellenistics and anatolians as well as you get further into the campaign and you have the ammunition as the antigonids to deal with all of them my main suggestion with this faction guys is to take out the smaller factions one by one don't waste time taking out larger factions and spending loads of time go and take out these small factions before they get multiples full stacks and you'll be able to steamroll a load of them my suggestions are obviously epirus early game they only start with one full stack if you can defeat that you can siege down all of Epirus, and then you've also got smaller factions like the Peloponnese that is uh, disunited. Go and take out the factions one by one in South Greece and on the Peloponnese, and then you can choose where you want to go, whether you want to go north into the Thracians, whether you want to go towards the Illyrians, or whether you want to go east towards Anatolia. Really, really fun faction. And finishing us off, guys, we have the Achaean League. The Achaean League, for me, is the best option if you want to start small in Greece because the Achaeans have a fantastic roster. They probably have the best Greek roster, in my opinion, in the game, obviously excluding the Hellenistic Diadochi, that is going to be a strong roster the whole way through the game. There's also something very methodical about the Achaean League and how you play it because you're going to take over the Peloponnese, but you're going to be declaring war on factions one by one, taking them out. And once you've taken the Peloponnese, once you've taken Attica, Evia, and the Aetolian League out, you should be in a very nice position, rich and strong enough to then take on the monster to your north, the Antigonids. Overall, these guys, in my opinion, are the most fun faction to start as in southern Greece. I have done a guide on these, so if you want to check them out, you can check out the guide down below. So that is it for today, guys. I hope you did enjoy. Please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out, and I will see you all again on the next 
video. And as usual, a massive thank you to the channel members on the channel. We have Kawi Psycho, we have David, and we have Pascal. If you are interested in supporting the channel, guys, a link is down in the description below where you can support the channel for as little as $1 a month. But that is everything. Thank you for watching.